Hello and welcome to vlog number 11. Wow, what a, what a great number. And first of all, I want to say I just breached 200 subscribers, which is just beyond all belief. So thank you to every single one of those and I look forward to welcoming more to the channel over the coming weeks and months. This vlog is very much a vlog of two halves. The first half is going to be almost entirely about Rosie's Hobbit Hole, as it should be, really, it being the project I'm focusing on mostly. And then the second half, there'll be some more stuff to do with the Sarissa MDF buildings as I push towards fixing them and finishing them up so that I can clear the decks for the next project. So without any further ado, I will stop rambling and we will jump to historical beard and see what happened last week. My miniatures have all been washed and dried and at the same time I decided to throw in the Bill Fernie and the Ruffian uh, leaders. The, um, let's get the box, they, uh, this is it here. Um, so I thought I'd do them at the same time because I do prefer batch painting generally. But I'm going to focus on Rosie and the gaffer because that's what I need to have done for Rosie's birthday. Uh, so yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to clean these up and I thought I'd do at least the first bit on camera just in case you haven't seen this done before so that it might be useful if you're picking up a Forge World miniature for the first time. Now one thing to say is if you're going to start doing a lot of these or if you're even going to be sanding them or uh, filing them down then you should wear yourself a mask because the dust are from Forge World I've heard, I'm not totally sure if this is true but I've heard that it's not good for you. So just be aware of that, get yourself a mask. However all I'm going to be doing is snipping off these little uh, bits of support so you can see underneath her arm there there's a little bit of support it cuts very very easily let's see if I can do this on camera where you can see it's very very easy so I'm literally just pressing the knife up against the edge and it goes through that's it done there we are that easy and then you come in and you just tick it and it's off so it's very very easy to do this clean up um, at this level and what you're looking at doing is finding any areas where there's a you can see on the underneath gaffer's foot for example which I've got to focus yeah underneath gaffer's foot there's a little little bit there you can see on the back so we'll take that one off as well so there we are done simple as that it's very very easy to clean up Forge World resin which is one of the reasons why I like it so much so then you'll let it be left off, left up with some little nubs, little nubs on the uh, edge of her coat there, and a very very small mould line coming down here, which you can clean up just with your exacto blade, just in the way that I'm sure that you'll have seen other people doing it. But if not, it's just a case of very very gently scraping to get rid of those mould lines. So on Gaffer, we've got another one underneath his arm, which is actually already separated from the looks of it. Just gonna make sure that I actually should be cutting that. I think I should. Cause there's this weird thing going around the back but that's too much like a what's it, so I'm going to cut it off. If it's wrong, then I'll be cursing it later on in the build, and you'll remind me of this, and you'll say, you really, you shouldn't have cut that, but I think I should. So I think th that's how much cleanup there is. I mean, it's just so quick work with Forge World. So then we're going to have a look at these. These are the arms, and th which are going to need to be glued in place. And so I'll just do a quick visual over these see if there's anything and I can't see anything at all and finally the flower pots now there's a bit more on the flower pots um, but what I'm going to be doing with them I think is cleaning them up when I've taken them off of the sprue so to take them off the sprue what we're going to do is we're actually going to I'm going to cut that in half because I'm going to paint this on the sprue that's one of the reasons why I like Forge World so much is that their miniature bases which they sit on are actually good enough for you to then 
um, stick to something else, so um, blue tack to a cork or whatever, and you don't need to worry about like handles. So I'm gonna get my razor saw, I'm just gonna cut that. Okay, I feel safer now, there's no more dust around, I've cleared it all up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna to turn to these little things here, which is the arms. So we've got Gaffer's foot on a spade or a shovel. Can't tell which it is, because the end's in. Uh, we've got his other arm raised in defiance, I think. Uh, and then we've got the, we've got his other arm. Oh yes, his other arm, yes, which is gonna sit on top of the uh, spade handle or shovel handle and then we've got Rosie's arms holding the aforementioned flagon which is going to have to be converted into a baby. Now I'm going to do that first I think and I have some ideas about how I'm going to convert but the first thing I need to do is actually stick the uh, arms in place. So using my side snips, my clippers, hee hee, that's where the name comes from. Thank you to my friend Alchemy for the assistance in coming up with the name, by the way. I should probably give you a, a shout out. My own personal enabler. We're going to clip that off carefully and have a quick look at that. So that there is going to sit on... This is probably not the greatest of YouTube experiences anyone's ever had because well, A, I'm not very good at this anyway, even without trying to do it on camera, and B, doing it on camera is quite hard. So, there we are, that's focused in. So that then sits in there, which is actually okay. Pretty much goes in without any forcing, which is another thing that I really like for Forge World. They're, they make their stuff right. So what's going to happen is I'm going to glue that on there, and I'm actually going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to drape or green stuff a cloth. So it will just she'll just have a have it hidden in the cloth, and it will just be a little bit. It's a very very simple um, way of doing a conversion, but it will mean that it looks like she's got a baby. The only issue being is that it will look like she's got a baby that she's holding like this. But yeah, maybe I need to think about that a bit more. I've had some thought, and I've made a decision, and this could go very very badly wrong indeed. And then I might be cursing because I will have wasted my beautiful model and I don't know what I'll do, because I have two of them, but I don't want to have to buy another one. So, as I kind of started cogitating at the end of the last segment, the way that she's holding this beer stein is not a good way for her to be holding a baby, because she has one hand on top and one hand on the side. Now, I've been looking at some of the pictures of what I'm looking at, actually, uh, so I've been looking at, actually, um, reproducing and in one of the at least one of the pictures see if I can get this to my big hands not in the way rotate around in one of the in one of the pictures her hand is actually resting outwards like that and then what I can do is the other hand on the other side I can have a little bit lower down and then that can hold the baby so what that will mean I will be doing is actually cutting away the beer stein <laughs> So, I'm going to get my goggles, my magnifying goggles, and I'm going to give that a go, and I'm even going to let you watch. So let me gather my goggles, and let's get this, uh, let's get this little exacto knife to, to work. Right, here goes nothing. So this is where the fact that it's not fine cast actually goes against me. Because fine cast, I could pretty much just do this. So what I'm going to actually do is use my snips, use my clippers, and I'm going to separate out the hand from the beer stein like that. Right, there's no going back from this. That's where I need to cut it. Let's hope it doesn't spoil. There we are. Look at that. Done. Right, so we've got one hand, which I can use a file to clean up a bit. Let's put that over there. And then we've got the other hand, which still has the beer stein in it. And this is the one which will be underneath the baby. So, 
actually I might be able to get away without doing too much. Let's see, let's just take some of that beer stein away. And I'm going to use the snips again because the that didn't work at all with the um, with the exacto. So we're just going to snip away small little bits, just trimming it down. I hope that you can see this with these goggles on. I can't really look at the camera at all to see what you can see. My instinct is that you can see it. If you can't, then I might just speed this up or skip it entirely. Hmm. One false move and you're cursing. There we are. So, that no longer has a beer stein on it. How about that? Oh, I'm st <laughs> well, I'm still kind of within the camera, that's almost. Almost. Right, so let's get rid of the rubbish and move what we've got so you can see. So over here we have the one hand and over here we have the other hand. This is the right hand which is going to be poking out away from the body and will be able to be resting on top of something uh, when I position her. And the other hand is going to be held in such a way that I can then sculpt a baby, swaddled baby with green stuff up against her body. So I'm going to do a bit of tidying up, zoom back out, get my green stuff and give this a go. So I'm very hopeful that that previous segment filmed okay. If it didn't then you won't have seen it because I will have cut it because I'm not going to show you just which of my hands doing this. That would be a bit pointless. But what I've ended up with here is two arms without a beer stein between them and that was quite difficult but not as difficult as it could have been. I'm now going to stick the arms in place because I need them to go off before I can really do any green stuffing because I don't want to be trying to do five things at once. So hold an arm, glue it in, green stuff. Nah, that, I'm not interested in that. I'm not good enough for that, frankly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just glue these arms in, put it to one side, move on to the gaffer, and then come back to this a bit later on. Glue does go off quite quickly. So we're going to just put a really little dibble of super glue, which is what you have to use because it's not plastic, so I can't use my plastic glue. Just put a little dot of super glue there, take the arm and stick it on. And like I say, this is going to be done not quite how it is on the drawing. I fiddle too much. Tell you what. This is going to be my friend here, I think. So the problem is I'm not happy with it. If I'm not happy with it, I'm not going to just leave it there. What I might do is get my super glue gel, which will hold its shape a bit better. See, that's the right angle. Nearly. It's not going to be very secure, that. Might need to get some super glue gel on that, I think. Yep, yeah, let's get my super glue gel. I don't know whether I've got any in this tube or if I'll need to open another one. So, a little bit of super glue gel just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Yeah, that's going to be fine. There we have it, that's what I want. That's going to need green stuff. So we're going to do the other side later. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera off, going to do gaffer because this is the focus of the video and also do the other miniatures and then we'll come back and uh, do some green stuffing on her. Next up on the Swiss MDF buildings, I want to do some of the floors. Now I've decided on this one, I'm going to leave the walls whitewashed so I don't have to paint them. And what I've done is I've printed this off on the internet uh, it's just some uh, herringbone style flooring and I'm going to stick this down inside. So I've ke carefully measured and then cut it using my guillotine so that it's absolutely square um, and I'm now going to put a small film of glue on the back, on the bottom and PVA glue and then just let that sink down and glue in place. So I will show you what that looks like when it is done. That worked very well. That's now going to dry nicely. So the next thing to do is two things I'm going to do at the same time and I'll 
um, point the camera in a slightly different direction. I'm going to paint the doors with a nice purple that I have here. And I'm going to paint the wooden details, which is around the windows. Let me just lift that a bit so you can see it. So around each of the windows, around the door, and also on this platform here and everywhere else that there's wood, uh, including all these. I'm going to paint with this here, which is Umbra Natura, which I bought in Belgium a couple of years back and it's still good against all the odds. So I'll get the camera set up and I will probably put some, some um, music on while I'm doing that and you can see how that works, how that looks. So first of all, I'm going to go in with the purple, which I've already shaken up and I have some in the lid, which is how I like to use these bottles. And I'm going to use a fine brush, just a cheap brush from a supermarket, and very carefully get in and paint these doors. With that done, at least one coat, I'll be back for another coat I'm sure. I'm now going to get stuck in on the umber. So I have some on a plate here already. It's going to clean this brush. So I'll use the same one. And let's get started. So I'm not going to paint the, that, those, I'm just going to paint the outside here very carefully. not sure how much of this is going to get on camera because it's quite an odd shaped building so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off there's no point in wasting battery and I will show you what it looks like when I've finished I'm rather pleased with how that's come out I've done as I mentioned the purple let me move the light so that you can see a little bit better so I've done the purple door and I've done all of the wood, including on the platform there and the porch on the back. And what I've also done, which I probably should have done initially, is I've found the missing bit of the porch, which isn't glued in yet, and I've actually painted that as well. Now, the things that I left to do on this is the brickwork along the bottom of this porch and along the bottom of the other porch and all the way around, if I decide to do it all the way around. And then I'll be gluing this on, and then there are some final steps to go on, which I'll be painting in grey, which aren't glued on yet. And then that building is pretty much done, apart from the floors in these two buildings, in these two rooms, which I need to get something printed out. But you can see that the, um, this long room is coming on nicely. And then I'll be thinking about chimneys. As I approach completion of the field, I am coming to finish off the fence. And as you can see here, I got my chop it and my coffee stir is out. And then I had a better idea. And I'm gonna show you what my better idea is. And then I'm gonna finish it off and do it off camera because it's gonna be a bit fiddly. So my better idea is to use this garden twine and to kind of make it look like they've gone into a um, they've got some very thick rope and run it all the way around like that so I'll lift that up slightly so you can see and I'll do two courses of that at least or maybe three and I think that will look really nice but unique but different not something I've seen someone else do uh, and it's also going to be a lot easier and quicker than attempting to cut and glue lots and lots of coffee stirrers. So that's my plan. I think it's going to work quite nicely. I will do that and let you see what it looks like when it is done. That has turned out very, very nicely. I'm quite pleased with that. What I'm now doing is getting my uh, fine, one of these scrubby fine brushes that's a bit knackered and old, taking some watered down PVA 
and painting it onto the actual twine like so and that will cause it to go stiff obviously uh, and also will secure it to each of the uprights. I did briefly consider getting some uh, wire and twisting it around each upright onto the onto the uh, twine but yeah that's gonna would take a long time and I then also thought that maybe they would be more likely to have actually used the twine itself to wrap, wrap around but I've already glued it in place and stuff so it's a bit late to like that but that's another thing to uh, consider for a future attempt at this technique so I am just in the middle of watching uh, some Spectre Ops on Tabletop CP on my phone which is out of shot at the moment so what I'm going to do is pop that back on and you can see this when it is completed I haven't made any progress on this since Saturday um, just yesterday I was too tired and decided to take a day off on hobbying completely and this evening I've been working on a few other bits and pieces however I don't want to go a day without putting apart from Sunday obviously about that putting some effort in so what I've decided to do is something quite simple but which is very very important which is to do the same type of things I've done on this side for the wood but on this side so on the neighbour's uh, hobbit hole so what I'm going to be doing is getting my pencil and my, and my sharpies marking out the shape and then cutting out some sections and gluing it on and um, just making sure that the whole thing looks good. This side doesn't seem to have any windows in it so what I might do when I come to the uh, doing the mound I might actually have to put some windows on the side on the mound over here because just one door and no light or I could put a little uh, porthole window there. I'm not sure we'll have a think about that uh, but for now I'm just going to go on with this cardboard and finish off the fascia on this side of the building. Well, there we have it. I have put on quite a lot of the wood that is needed to finish this off and I've turned the camera on to do one last thing now and show you how I'm doing this. Now if you look on this side which is number three um, you will see that the door has I've marked out the wooden struts the wooden um, panels and um, the way I've done that is using the back of a Stanley knife now you do need to be quite careful because obviously what you've got is you've got the knife end towards you but as simple as this is you are pressing down into the cardboard and not going all the way through and that makes a nice mark which looks a little bit like a panel and you can do that for all of the panels that you want on the door and then when you come to paint this it will look like a wood panel door and that is how quick that is so I put my knife away because I'm safety conscious and there we have it that is now a door that has wood panels on it which can now be painted up to look like a wooden door so I'm going to now let that to dry that is uh, good progress to have made this evening when I didn't think I was going to do anything and that will now mean that tomorrow I'll be looking at doing the chimney and potentially mounting that and getting the rest of the foam work done so the mound behind it and it does look like I will need to put some kind of a dormer window or something on the side of this hobbit hole just so that it's not too much like a cave because as we know they are not dirty stinky holes in the ground they are beautifully decorated and you do need natural light in a beautifully decorated home. What I am doing now is more floors in the Sarissa buildings. I have purchased these from Scalemates and I'm printing them out. They were in HO scale which is way too small for 50, for 28 millimeter. It's actually uh, nearer between 15 and 20 millimeter. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm actually scaling them up a little bit, printing them out separately and then I'm going to cut them down on the guillotine and glue them in place in the same way as you saw me glue the other floor. So I'm not going to run through that process over and over and over again. I'm going to get the whole of the floors done for all of the buildings, that's my plan. And what I'll do is when I'm done, when they're all glued in place, then I'll show you what that looks like. But what I thought I would do is show you a couple of the um, textures I've gone for. So this is like a tiled floor. And then we've got a couple of almost carpeted floors. I mean, this one's almost clearly a carpeted floor. This one could be anything, really. 
it'll just finish it off. We're not going to be going inside these buildings very often, but I don't like the idea of them just being bare MDF. So let's get started on that. So as you can see, we have floors inside the rooms and they're looking quite nice. It's taken a lot longer than I wanted it to, quite fiddly at times, but maybe tomorrow I'll think it was worth it. But right now I wish I hadn't bothered. <laughs> uh, but that's how things go with hobbying. So just onwards and upwards. Um, the final things to do on this is finish off the top of the wall, put the door in and do the joins between each of the sheets of stuck on uh, sandpaper. So very, very, very close to finish now on this one, which is very satisfying indeed. We are on to the final process for the field prior to actually uh, just dressing it with a few bits of planks and what have you. And that is to put the grass on these areas here between where the path is going to be. And what I'm going to do uh, for this is I'm going to use my dark flock, which I have here. And I'm going to scatter it quite sparsely in all the areas that don't have any flock at the moment, including underneath where the uh, shed will go when I make the shed, because when it's not there, it needs to look like something was there. So I'm going to grab my brush and get started and I will pop some music on for you. looking really nice. So we've got sparse grass where there's been a warm path. We've got an area for putting a, hair, a shed on which I'll do in another video. I went for this interesting and it's worked very nicely actually rope effect for the fence and I quite like it it's a bit different. Uh, it's dried very nicely since I put the PVA all over it and it does delineate the edge of the field quite nicely. The crops has worked brilliantly, I mean that's a, a good technique. The pond looks great, these little uh, reeds are looking brilliant. Um, I'm bottom line very happy with that. So now I will let that dry, I will give it an all over spray with the PVA, let that dry again, and then it's pretty much done. I will be dressing it a bit, I'll probably, I've got some of these spare um, uprights which I'm going to put probably on the head, on the head or on the shed when I make the shed. Uh, so I think that's pretty much done by ceiling. So I'm going to call that a wrap. So another project completed. That's a big thumbs up. Here we are again with the miniature for Rosie. And I'm going to zoom in now. This is part of my arty farty attempt. There we are. Look at that. And she has dried very nicely. She has glued in place very nicely. And what I'm about to do definitely off camera for this one, is put some green stuff in the gaps. So let me zoom in even further. That's as far as I can zoom in, there we are. I'm sure that'll be fine. So what you'll see, what you can probably see is that there's this shoulder here, this elbow here isn't very, there's a little bit of a gap there. And also where this arm attaches at the elbow as well. So I'm going to just put a teeny tiny bit of green stuff in there and leave that. I'm not going to do the baby or any other sculpting or any other converting. I'm just going to put that stuff in and then go away. One thing I've learned um, in this is that patience is my friend. And if I'm not patient, then I will make mistakes. And when I make mistakes, things go wrong and I get annoyed. So I'm just going to do this very, very steadily. I've got other things I can get on with in this build while Rosie is being done. So green stuff in those gaps and then step well away. The other miniatures are all done and looking very nice. So I will be priming all these together and painting them all as a batch. So I'm just going to be working on Rosie today. I will show you what it looks like when the green stuff is in place. I've done it. I've put green stuff in the joints and they will now go off over this evening 
and then I will be back tomorrow with this one to do some priming on this and all the other miniatures. I did end up doing a little bit of green stuffing on the, the um, gaffer um, miniature as well because uh, his shoulder was a little gappy but that's all I've done. Everything else I think I'm pretty happy with. So yeah, that was that was okay. I'll do a video at some point on green stuff uh, when it's not quite so fiddly and it doesn't matter quite so much to me about the miniature. Uh, so I will do something uh, showing you how I do my green stuff and give you some hints and tips on it. But for now that's done and I'm gonna leave that to dry. With the facade done, I now need to work on the mound that goes behind the hobbit holes, the actual hobbit holes if you were. And what I've got done is I've got some quite thick polystyrene, which I don't normally work with. So it could be that I decide to pick a different material if this doesn't work out completely how I want it to. But what I've done is I've marked out the shape of the hobbit hole. And you can see that I can place that there. And that will be like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hot wire cutter and my mask. And I'm going to very carefully cut down absolutely vertically on that shape because that is the bottom of it and then any sculpting that I do will come up away from that though of course the hobbit hole will be glued on the front and what I'm aiming on doing today what I would like to finish with today is this cut out and the hobbit hole glued to the front that's my target so let's see if I can achieve that it's getting a little later than I wanted it to be for starting this project um, so yeah um, onwards as fast as I can. What I have is my hot wire cutter and a sled that my parents bought for me which I haven't yet used and you can see that my mask is there and so what I'm going to do is put that mask on very quickly because it is already smoking and I will cut out that shape so hopefully you'll capture this on camera hopefully you will see this footage here goes <laughs> So with that cut and everything tidied away, my next task is to glue this uh, fascia to the foam that's just been cut. And I do just want to hasten to add that during the previous uh, segment I had the window open, it's very important to have ventilation as well as wear a mask. And I probably should have been wearing glasses as well, uh, but it was okay. Um, it's really stinky stuff and even with the window open and the ventilator, it was uh, not a very nice experience. So what I'm now going to do is glue this, as I say, with the gator glue. So I have a damp cloth, which I'm going to just wipe across the back of this very, very lightly. This is what it suggests that you do. You moisten one of the surfaces slightly, and then I will apply the gator glue. So it's just gonna be put in place there. And then I'll be grabbing my ever at hand clamps. I should be called beer clamper, not beer clipper. And I will be clamping this in place. More clamps, more clamps, please. All clamps, please. These really are superb, these clamps. I have lots of them, but you knew that because you've seen me using them. And because that's all so well clamped in place, and it really is, that corner, that edge, is not going to cause a problem. So I have managed to, against all the odds, achieve my target. I have 
cut out that and stuck the fascia on. So I'll leave that overnight and I'll return to it tomorrow where I will start carving down again using a mask, using with the windows open, but this time with safety goggles on or safety glasses. And I'll make that finish, finish that shaping off tomorrow and start to glue it in place. I'm really, to be hearing my voice, I am really pleased with this. Really pleased. Yesterday evening I finished the green stuffing and I did actually have to add a little bit of green stuffing to some of the ruffians. I've left that for 24 hours so that's now should be completely gone off and this evening I'm going to be attempting to get some priming done, transferring over to a different task so that I can go off and maybe if, it go, if my primer goes off quickly enough I can make a start on putting some colours down on these miniatures. Now one thing did arrive today and I'm going to try to do my 48 hour thing so I've had it for maybe six hours, so I need to finish it by um, midday-ish um, on Friday for me to achieve this 24, this 48 hour challenge. So let's see if I can do it. But it's the miniature that is going to be for Sam. Now this isn't a current model. I believe this is from one of the old, um, I don't know where it's come from actually, but it's definitely Sam. Um, I believe it's from one of the old uh, times when they made a, uh, um, made miniatures. Maybe someone who's watching this can, can correct me, I might have got it completely wrong, but it looks brilliant and it's going to be absolutely perfect for this diorama. I'm not going to leave the camera running. The reason for that is um, I'm actually um, wanting to crack on quite a lot this evening. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to get done and filming does actually slow you down. I, I, you talk to anyone on YouTube, it really does. Even as slap dash as my videos are it still does slow me down so i'm just going to get going and i'll bring you back as soon as i've done uh, you can see what the primering has been, is um, i will say that i'm going to primer the uh, ruffians with a black primer and i'm going to do uh, rosie and gaffer and sam with the gray primer and i'm probably going to do the same for the gray primer as well for the flower pots so here goes I've just done a load of priming and I heard you shouting at the video saying you forgot about the baby and Rosie's arms and so I did. However, I have already resolved that so let me point the camera down and show you what I've done. There you can see Rosie is now holding a babe in arms and that looks perfectly fine to me. It's going to be good enough for this diorama and when it's painted up it will certainly look right. I've opened up on the side facing her a little gap in the green stuff so that it looks like that's uh, the baby's face looking out through a wrapped up cloth and, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now in the background what you probably can see which I will now bring to the fore is three very small miniatures. Now these actually are from, um, I can't remember the name of the company now, um, Hassle Free, that's it, from Hassle Free Miniatures and they are the Village Kiddies box set, a uh, little set for, for fancy villagers, which I bought um, ages ago, can't remember when. And then I've suddenly remembered I've got them and I've realized that the very smallest child is going to look, get rid of those two, the very smallest child is going to look absolutely fine. Let me see if I can show this a little bit. It's gonna look absolutely fine, tucked in underneath the hand of Rosie, which is what I've got in my picture. So. Um, the child is next to, so there's two children in the, uh, in the end of the film. You've got the baby in arms and you've got the little baby girl that runs out to Sam. So perfect, I'm actually quite lucky. Uh, I hadn't even thought of that until, until just now. So those two things, um, that's so first of all, Rosie is going to be um, left so that this green stuff goes off. And I'm now about to prime up the little baby girl. And then I'm done on the painting and uh, I will be going over to something else and then coming back, hopefully putting some colors on some of these towards the end of the evening. The facade is securely glued to that foam now. And I don't know if you can see just on the left hand side of the picture, I've actually started to bevel that a little bit. Now, my experience yesterday with the uh, foam cutter uh, really put me off quite a lot. I didn't enjoy it very much. Um, and it being so cold outside, I've decided that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and do this with a very sharp knife the, um, that you can see in the front here. And I'm going to try to bevel down the, uh, the slope and finish off how that back slope is going to look 
um, and do that by hand rather than using the cutter just because well it was just not very nice at all and it's just too cold to have windows and doors open and fans blowing and all sorts of other things that I would need to do to get that working. I think that hot wire cutter is a summer tool. The other thing that I'm going to try to do is put in the roof. There is a little bit of a roof that is visible on the picture which I will flash up now. What you can see is behind where the chimney is, it goes back at quite a good angle, but it actually goes all the way along, all the way along the top. There are beams coming out, jutting out from the bank with a very, very slight amount of tiling over the top. So what I'm going to do is use some short lengths of matchstick and stick them into the foam, and that will then be my roof line, which will be over the top of where the cardboard facade is. If I can get all that done, I will then attempt to draw in the bricks on the chimney and then paint that chimney with something to make it secure, work out how high it's going to go as well. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be as high as it is now and uh, that will be a good place to get to. I was thinking that I might get to actually painting the facade. I think I'm not going to this evening because there's a few other bits that I need to do which I hadn't realised. Uh, but again, we'll see how it goes. It could be very quick and I might uh, get to painting the wood at least on the... Um, on, on, on the facade. So I will show you as I'm going along, I will, intro, I will bring you back in uh, as there's things to show you, but mainly I'm going to be doing this off camera and I will see you and show you how the progress goes throughout the evening. I'm making good progress on this at the moment. You can see that there's um, the beams for the roof have all been installed uh, and what I'm now working on is carving up for the chimney and what I've done is I've trimmed this down as I said I would however it's a little bit wibbly wobbly and it doesn't feel very strong and what I thought I'd do is actually show you the technique that I use for strengthening things like this and it's as simple as toothpicks so you can see that there's a toothpick just in the top and what I do is I push the toothpick down very carefully because you don't want to break it and you want to make sure it goes in vertically so it doesn't come out the side and I push the toothpick in, and then I'll push it in with some more. So, um, yep, I'll use the lid here. There we are. And that will add some rigidity to the structure and mean that it's not quite so likely to break when you look at it. Sorry, I have my hand over there because I'm actually doing this as I speak. So what I do is I just stick a couple of toothpicks down through the thin uh, foam which has a chance of breaking. So I've made some quite good progress there. I've put a little bit of colour on the wood and I've done the marking out for the chimney. What I'm now going to do is mix up some plaster, put some grey in the plaster and then paint that over, quite a loose mix it'll be, and paint it over all the way over all the white to make that a little more, I really don't like polystyrene, um, make that a little more solid and also to secure down these two um, rafters there that are a little bit wibbly wobbly um, as they've actually on, on top of the um, on top of the polystyrene. That will be it for the night. I'll have to leave that to dry. The next thing that will be done after that will be using some of the modeling compound to build up the contours to make the shape of the roof behind here with some more with a couple more rafters coming out. Um, and yeah, we're making good progress, but um, it's got a bit late. It's taken a little longer. Uh, I thought it might take quite a long time this. So um, I do need to start wrapping up. So I'm gonna get this done, which won't take long, and then call it a night. And there you have it. I have painted on quite a thin mix of plaster all over and, in, and the back. And I have secured, as you can see, the uh, top of the facade with that as well. And I have also painted it onto the chimney, so that's now grey. That will be left to dry overnight. It probably will still be quite damp in the morning, but in the morning I'll be able to move it down into the warm, and then it can go off, and then I'll be able to come back to that tomorrow evening. It's a shame I've not been able to get any more paint on the miniatures, but it really is quite late now, so I'd better get to bed, and I will be back onto this with a vengeance tomorrow. My plan for this evening was to not do very much on this part of the build. However, unfortunately, what I've realised is I made a bit of a mistake. What I've done, I can, re I can have, um, adjust it, and I even knew about this before I started yesterday, but then excitement and tiredness took over and I got distracted and I made the mistake. What I need to do is actually take these out, shave down the foam so that it goes to the top of the wood, 
and then put them back in again. The reason for that is, is the roof needs to come down to here. And on the other side, I'm gonna to need to take out maybe those two and shave it down. That one might be all right. This one might be all right, but it might come loose anyway, because the roof needs to go down over the top, and definitely these ones need to be shaved down. Now, the good thing is, is I can cut it with my knife, and so it's not a complete loss, but what it will mean is I'm just gonna be distracted for a bit before I start on what I really want to do. I also want to show some things that arrived today which are for this diorama, for this. These are some sunflowers, they're some Edouard Natalech and they look beautiful. So you, uh, they're going to be going in a pot which will sit here in front of the, uh, uh, actually here I think, uh, and that's what there is on the picture I've got anyway. I have some other um, sunflowers on order that haven't arrived yet, maybe they'll be with the next delivery that arrived today. Uh, the second thing that arrived today which again may not work very well for this, but um, I ordered it because I wasn't totally sure, was this gardener's set, which is probably a little bit big uh, for what I'm doing, but it comes with some, some gardening people. It's got a, a few things I can maybe use. There's a watering can, there's a plant pot, there's a, not a fork and a spade. I'll, be, I'll look at them and see what they look like when they're put against the miniatures. My feeling is, is they're going to be massively oversized and look very odd. So that may have been a bit of a waste for this, but they can always be used in a future diorama. So that's not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do is going to set myself up. I'm going to get that cut away and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I don't really want to be cutting on camera, but what I will do is because I'm going to be making such a small amount is I'll show you how I make this mix up to, uh, it's a really, really cool idea. It makes such a difference when you're working with foam uh, and it's very quick to do and it's very, very light. It doesn't add weight, which is also a win if you're looking at sealing your board and you don't want to put, add extra weight. So I'll also come back and show that. So let me get that done and I will be, uh, I'll point the camera and show you me mixing and applying the, the um, I don't know what to call it, the shell um, on this model. That didn't take me very long. You can see here that I've gouged some out. I think the other side is actually okay, so I'm not going to bother with it. Now what I'm going to do is take you through the process of making this. I want to hasten to add now, and I will say again later, that this is not a massively strong layer. What it is, is a layer that binds and will give you something to build upon and you will want to, particularly if you're using something as soft as polystyrene, you will want to add more uh, layers to it and, and toughen it up it will easily press through, but that is a lot better than, than that to work with because you don't get the bubbling and it just keeps under control. So I just want to hasten that, that to add. I'm not suggesting this is a final layer and you'll see that it's not the final layer of what I'm doing here, but it's a very good idea if you're working with polystyrene that you've just hacked away out with a knife and you haven't used a hot wire tool on. So here we have polyfiller powder. I buy this by bulk as you can see and what I do is I'm very careful I keep a separate dedicated little kind of it's actually an Otto lemon squeezer oh yeah, um, to scoop out and I don't ever mix and match so this is only ever used for the dry. I have one in there which I use for the wet and when I'm measuring out a specific consistency I can easily measure the ratios because these do have um, the markings on the handle which I was holding out of sight, but just the mark is on the handle. But that's something to be very careful with when you're working with plaster. Now I'm only wanting to make up a very small amount, so I'm just gonna get a tiny amount. That might even still be too much. And what I've got here is an old uh, plastic tray that I'll put that into, okay? And that's then done. I won't need any more than that, I'm sure I won't. So again, keeping things tidy. No matter how much you, look, you try and do this, your hands will get covered in plaster and it's dust everywhere. So I have strong clamps that I put over the top of the plaster. Oop, I'll lift that out of the way. <sighs> right, the next thing I have is the dark gray paint. Um, I put this in and mix it in because what I don't like is to have white showing through. I like to have it colored. And when I'm doing this in the other times, I'll put blue in, or gray, I'll put black in, sorry, not blue, black in or brown or whatever, depending on what it is I'm trying to do. But for this, gray is good. The next thing that I mix is my trusty PVA glue. Just dollop that in. The reason I put PVA in is it adds a bit of flexibility. And as I've said, it's not massively strong, this, and it may even press through quite easily. So having a bit of flexibility will mean that it, while it's not rigid, it is flexible and it won't like deform and stay out of shape. 
And then, just a teeny tiny bit of water at this stage, you can always add the water. And what we'll do then is we'll give it a good stir. Might need a bit more water than that. I think I might have made quite a lot too much here, but never mind. That looks like a better amount of water. And what you'll see is as you're stirring this, the dark grey goes lighter. That's something to bear in mind, that, Pete, that the um, polyfiller actually does have dye in it. And it does actually impart a lighter, it'll, it'll shade your the painty paint you add lighter. So just bear that in mind. Now that hasn't taken very long to mix at all as you can see. What you do want to do is make sure that there's not any white lumps left on the bottom so give it a good scrape. Make sure you get all the lumps out. There we are. And that's a nice consistency to be painted on. And that's what I'm going for. I, I want to be able to apply this with a paintbrush. So I'm going to now stand up and grab my old paintbrush, which is what I use for this. It does wash out quite nicely, but I still recommend that you don't use one of your favorite paintbrushes for this. It is after all, plaster and glue and paint. And that's not necessarily something you want in a very nice expensive brush. And what I then do is I dollop it on. And it's not a very scientific process, you'll be surprised to hear with me. Um, but what you're trying to do is add a nice solid layer, which can, when it dries, and it does go off overnight, I'll leave this now overnight in the warm. You can see how dry all of this is, having been done just yesterday, very late yesterday actually. It was 11 o'clock last night-ish when I was doing this, right at the end of the night. And what you're looking to do in there is just uh, dolloping that in there so that it will seal off those bubbles. Now the other thing that I've been doing with this, and that's why I'm not too disappointed to have too much, is I will use it as a base on the chimney. And that will mean that I can then come in with shading and what have you. And again, not worry about damaging the polystyrene by brushing hard or whatever, because I've got this layer of glue and paint and, and you know, PVA uh, and plaster, and it's and it's uh, covering it all over, and also it's acting almost as a primer. So this is blue polystyrene, uh, blue foam, and so you don't really want to be seeing that. That would be bad. And so by doing this and adding this on in a kind of lumpy way, it does dry and it does shrink a bit. So you will still see your carefully scored out. Um, bricks, you won't see any blue, because you don't want to see blue, because bricks aren't blue, not not in the Shire, they're not blue. So we'll just use the some of the remainder, and I have made loads too much, as always. I'd rather have too much than too little, it's not an expensive product. And then we'll go to the other side, and, we'll, and you can see actually I missed a bit at the top there, so it's good that I'm coming back in with a second coat and we'll just paint that over and seal that all off. And there we are. That is done. I will now leave that to dry overnight and then tomorrow when I come back to work on this again next, I will be doing the roof and putting the, the um, doing, doing the rest of the sculpting for the shaping of the actual mound. So there, yeah, that's how I make uh, and apply this kind of like thin plaster shell, if you want to call it that. Now we get to what I want to spend this evening doing, which is painting my miniatures. And as it happens, I'm listening to the Paint All The Minis podcast, and he's interviewing Travis Height from Hyatt, I said it wrong as well, <laughs> from uh, Tabletop CP, a YouTube channel I love, which I'm sure I've got linked on the side. Um, and Paint All The Minis is also an awesome community and podcast that I would recommend to you all. So yes, this evening is painting all the minis and it's painting all the minis for Rosie. So first of all, we have Rosie and she is going to be painted as far as I can. 
Next up, we have Sam. And if I'm going to achieve my 48 hour challenge, I need to get bed pretty much all of this done and basically ready to merely tomorrow seal um, with varnish and otherwise I will fail. I then have his daddy, which who is stuck to this stick uh, because obviously these are for a diorama not to be played with. Um, and then I have the kids. So those are the ones that are the most important to paint. I also have the ruffians on the side, which I'll be making a start on. Um, and what I also will probably try to do this evening, though uh, it is for a totally different project, is put some paint on one of my battle companies, because I haven't done any of that for ages. I've been so focused on this project that I just haven't been working on anything else. So that's what I've got in front of me. I'm not going to point the camera. I've got uh, things to listen to when I'm going to be dashing around all over the place. So what I will do is bring you back at the end of the evening and we'll see just exactly what I have achieved. That has been a very enjoyable evening. I really enjoyed the podcast I listened to from the Paint All The Minis and I got quite a lot done. Not quite as much as I hoped. I didn't actually finish off um, the ruffians and I didn't get on to painting the, any of my battle company, but I did get a long way with Sam. Now I will try and get some good pictures and po pop them up. One thing also that arrived today was a painting booth that myself and my missus can use. She does artwork in pastel and obviously I do my miniatures and also my terrain and um, we've ordered quite a large um, photo photography booth so that we can get some good pictures of what we do creatively. So that was very quick flash up of uh, Sam and Rosie and their little baby daughter, whatever she's called, I'd have to find that out really. Um, and I did do something on the ruffians, as you can see I've done some basic blocking out of colours um, on the three ruffian leaders uh, and they're looking quite nice, they're beautiful sculpts, absolutely beautiful sculpts, I'm, I mean it's just, just lovely. Uh, and then finally with Gaffer, bless his heart, Sam's dad, I did his arms and his face, I didn't really yeah, that's fine. That, that could be uh, push, put back to another time. The ones that are most important are these three, Sam, Rosie and the daughter. And yeah, they're looking really well. I should finish Sam tomorrow. He's got a final highlight and then the varnish and I can do that in the morning. Um, and Rosie is, uh, is very, very close as well. And so is the little daughter. I've, I've really smashed through these and they're going to be ready to go onto the diorama when I pick it up next. So I'm going to wrap up for the evening now. It's just past 11, so it's quite late, a bit later than I wanted to be again. But this is real. I'm enjoying this, this, this project. So I'm really pushing on it and spending a lot of time. Uh, so yeah, a good evening. Um, if you don't listen to Paint All The Minis podcast, I would recommend it. It was, it was really good fun to listen to. Good evening all. I took a day off yesterday on Friday. I didn't do very much. I did do a little bit before I went to bed. I was very tired. Uh, what I did is I stuck the hobbit hole, uh, and I thought about this a little while, and I stuck it to some blue foam just so that it's a little raised. Um, because I want it to go up a little bit, but not too much. And I think that'll probably be just about enough. So I did that and then went to bed. That was done with gator glue. And I've also stuck some um, cocktail sticks through as well, just to make it more secure. So this evening I'm gonna work on this and uh, get it so that hopefully so that I've got it all stuck down. And then tomorrow I can actually start doing the rest of the terrain um, modeling compound. So, yeah, I'm a little bit behind where I thought I'd be, but that's fine. Um, I also have quite a lot of time, so fingers crossed I haven't put myself off too much. Uh, but yeah, so onwards, I will be checking in and showing progress as I go. But this is just going to be me with a knife and it's not going to be very interesting to see. Uh, my plan is to carve it down, carve the paths in, give the general lay of the land, but not too much because most of my terrain is going to be done using the modeling compound and this is probably only going to be I'm probably going to cut it down by half to be honest at least if not more it's not there's not much rise so I will show you how it goes when I have done a little bit more and there's something interesting for you to see that's finished I've carved away I've left it going up to the same height actually to the full height uh, one reason was that I didn't realise that on this side, at least, there's actually a little bit of a hedged bank with some grass on the top. So I'll be building a hedge, a, a hedge fenced, building a fence here and then grass around it. 
um, and it's actually quite a uh, quite a feature so I hadn't realized that until I looked deeply at the picture so what we've got we've got the paths going up to the doorways uh, dug down a bit deeper and everything else is uh, is at a good height and I think that actually is going to look okay particularly when you look at how much this has built up um, it's not going to be too hard to get to that level what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the gator glue to stick the uh, stick that down to the wooden base uh, and then I'm going to have to put that outside um, on the desk outside in the uh, on the landing because I don't have space in here at the moment um, and uh, clamp that and weight it and what have you and then I'll get on with something else so that might be my final act on this this evening uh, but it's good it's getting there we're making progress I will um, I will be back on this build as soon as I can be once again I forgot to turn my microphone on so you've got post bed. What I have here are some cardboard brick sections which will be able to go around the base of this building um, and will hopefully also secure in the sandpaper which has loosened a little bit in places. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting it with red and then afterwards I will be sticking it on using PVA uh, and also I will then look to do what I'm pointing at at the moment which is the top of the wall because I'm getting very very close to finishing this and f the other thing that I'm about to work on is the doors so I have this new gadget I spent about five ten minutes before filming this making sure all of those little crocodile clips were actually securely fastened uh, this is going to be used for my paint airbrush but it also is very useful for this where you want to paint the whole of something you don't really want to be touching it so I'm putting the brow number which I have uh, started to use a lot for um, for doing wood uh, and I'm going to put that on the one side and I'm also going to put it on the other so what I'll do now is I will now speed up and I will be back when this boring bit's done That's done, so now we're going to grab the nice rich red and I'm going to paint that on over the top of all of these sections of brick. As you can see, unfortunately, some of them fell out in the packet, so they're loose, which is making it a little bit more difficult for me to paint. I do get some red all over my fingers, but that's fine. Um, and uh, the paint does go on quite thick in places, but it has turned translucent when it's dried so that's actually okay. I briefly thought about going over this with some white paint to um, here I'm showing off how some how it went on a bit thick on the small one and you can still see the black lines on the other one but that actually did sort itself out. Uh, so yeah so I'm just going to paint all of these with the red paint. I was thinking about going over the mortar with white but I decided against it but you'll see that in a minute. So I'm going to go to fast up again and I'll be back a bit later. While I'm thinking about that, and this time with the microphone turned on, go beard, I'm going to do the brick colour that is around the base of this building, which I'd forgotten about. And I'm going to use the same paint. So this time, I will again put some music on, and you can again enjoy that. And I will again just go over lightly. So I'll see you at the end. Shouldn't take me too long. Okay, there you are. That didn't take very long at all. Now what I have noticed while I've been doing this is that I actually missed some of the wood along the front. So I'm going to grab a slightly thinner brush from over here. Try and find one, that'll do. 
and I'm going to use this which hasn't quite gone off yet, thank goodness. And I'm just going to touch up along the front here because actually that should be wood along there. Done. Right, so that building, apart from the two front rooms here with no flooring, is pretty much done. I will be gluing on the front porch next and then leaving it. So while the camera's running, why don't I do that? As you can see, everything is really nicely to hand here. I was just able to reach my knife without getting up and reach my glue without getting up and reach different brushes without getting up. This hobby area is really starting to come together now, slowly but surely. So what we'll now do is use our brush that we did the, use the, for the wood and we will put some glue on the tabs. So there we are, we have the porch on. Isn't that looking well? Only thing is, we're going to need to put some more red on to cover over that tab. So let's quickly do that as well. And then this can go to one side to dry. And I still haven't finished thinking about the other Sarissa building and what I'm going to do with it. So I'm going to go and pick up another project uh, and I'll be back when I've decided. I have decided what to do on top of these walls and in the meantime I've also glued on the brick patterned paper card uh, which isn't sticking all that well with PVA so I may need to go over that again um, but for now that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make use of some of the spare card from the kit and I'm going to cut that out and glue it on and it's going to be as simple as that. So I will get that done and I will bring you back when it is completed. I think I'm going to paint it white or grey or something like that. That was easy. I've glued them on and clamped them because you can never have too many clamps as you well know. Next up what I'm going to be doing is working on finishing off this one which is also very very close to being done. Um, what I've noticed is that the porches which I were, was planning on potentially leaving loose are actually warping a little bit. They're very long and thin and, and to be honest I don't think that there's any real need to keep them off. I think it looks fine with them on and it's certainly you can still access and put your miniatures in and move them around. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be gluing those on just with PVA. And what you'll notice as well since the last time is I've stuck the uh, steps on. I've decided to go for the same brick red because I think it looks really nice. So I'm just going to glue those on and then pretty much um, that might even be me done for the for the evening I think uh, it's getting a bit late again now I've had a, a cracking time really good time here oh I forgot to show you um, I also did the doors on this one back here let me just quickly pick it up I can do it without damaging anything I can and what you can see is doors look they open and everything it's amazing I'll be back when they're glued on or not I'll be back when I'm back. I've not just been working in the room 13. I have also been doing some time and spending some time tidying and preparing the games room. So if you look over here, you can see that I've got well, Lee's table there, which you've seen in another video. And in front of me here, what I've done is I have put in place the, I'm just getting used to this gimbal, apologies. I've put in place uh, the 4x4 table which was downstairs for a while and I'm going to be using this to do some more live streaming um, not live streaming to do some more playthroughs I'm not going to live stream I'll leave that to Lockie the amazing job he's doing and uh, getting some of the games in on there now what you'll see is um, the art book for Arena 
which is an amazing game, and I'm probably going to pick that first when I start. The other thing that I've been doing is I've put in place very badly the um, reflective stuff behind the petchka behind the fire, as you can see, so that as it is very cold, I can now come in here in the evenings and do work and get some uh, playing get time in this room. So yeah, that's another thing that I've done this week on my hobby. Wow, you made it to the end. Well done. That was a particularly long vlog. It's long because I filmed a lot of stuff while I was working on Rosie's Hobbit Hole because I'm hoping that when she's older she can watch it and see just how much love, care and attention went into doing the build. Of course, that wasn't the only thing that I've covered off this week, and we've even got the first use of the gimbal. And I'm very much looking forward to getting into the games room and doing some more playthroughs. The uh, unbroken one, I enjoyed doing that, and it got a good reaction, including a comment from the person who wrote the rules, which is pretty exciting for me. Uh, and so, yes, that will be coming up over the next weeks or months or whenever I get round to it, whenever I get time. So there's nothing much more for me to say other than thank you again uh, for watching Beard Clipper. If you are not yet a subscriber, please do click below and subscribe so you get notified of whenever one of these videos is sent. You will need to ding the bell as well as subscribe. And thanks once more and finally for watching Beard Clipper.